Hey everybody, Corey here coming at you with a review of the Civivi Knives Statera. If you're new around here, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my knife related content. So, we will start with the usual size comparisons because everybody loves them. Here's your Civivi Statera. Here is your Reich 1902, which is subbing in as my conventionally large knife. And here is my Ontario Knives rat number two, which is always my conventionally small knife. What you can see is we're coming in smaller than the Reich, but larger than the Civivi. I'm sorry, larger than the rat two. The Civivi has an overall length of eight inches with a blade length of three and a half inches and a handle length of 4.5 inches. So not the biggest knife, not the smallest knife. Let's get everything else off the table so we can take a look at the Civivi. Now I'm going to tell you guys right up front, Civivi, they're always good, okay? Civivi's always good. But this is the knife that just, it, it solidified everything that I thought I knew about Civivi for, for a multitude of reasons. So first of all, the action's amazing. The action is as snappy as it can possibly be. And I don't know if you're seeing this right now. Look at this drop. There you go. Maybe just one wiggle to get it going, and then it just takes itself the rest of the way. It just glides. I did not have to do anything to this out of the box to get it this way. This is absolutely amazing on a production knife, especially for the price, and we'll get to the price in a little bit. As you can see here, I have the Damascus model. This is something I kind of want to talk about uh, later in the video, but yay, Damascus. Um, the ergos on this. The ergos are crazy. This is one of the very few knives that I have held and it, it just, it felt like it was made specifically to fit my hand. It's not necessarily extremely thick. However, it is relatively wide. So you don't have to deal with, you know, the clunkiness of a thick knife, but it ends up filling out the hand because of how wide it is. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not excessively wide. But my point is that it fills out your hand so nicely. I love the ergonomics. I don't know if I can say that this is really a finger choil. It, it's just on the cusp of being definitely a finger choil and maybe not a finger choil. But it's definitely good enough as a sharpening choil. I'm not going to talk too much about aesthetics because they're pretty subjective. But look at that. This is a layered carbon fiber a laminated carbon fiber on top of G10. You can see that the carbon fiber, you know, you can't see it where that cutout is because that's the G10. And you can see same thing here with the scalloping to give you access to the, uh, the liner lock. You can also see that the carbon fiber is just there. So some people get a little weird about their carbon fiber, but I actually really like the way that this looks. Look at that brass. I don't even, I don't want to call it brass or if it's anodized, look at that hardware. Your camera's not playing tricks on you. It's like brass hardware. They went out of their way to make all the hardware brass. They went out of their way to make sure that it was completely flush. The screws aren't coming through. Those liners are skeletonized. Guys, they have done everything with this knife that I could have asked for them to do. They made an unobtrusive lanyard. Well, it's, I can't. I get, uh, yeah, actually it is reversible. The reversible pocket clip right there if you feel the need to uh, to switch sides. Actually, I wasn't even thinking about that, but there you go. The blade shape, perfectly good for me. Maybe you don't like the way it looks. Maybe you're not into the fuller, but honestly, it does work. It's not too thick, but it's not so thin that I feel like I'm going to you know break the tip off. It's relatively thin, but you know it's not the thinnest I've ever seen. But that action, my gosh. That action, it just, it blew my mind. I was, I was so shocked. And I think part of that is because of this finish that they have on the blade. Because it, I, I have disassembled this. It's polished all the way down the tang. Um, so, you know, there's definitely some smoothness here. Of course it's riding on bearings because why wouldn't it? Lock up, you're looking at mm, maybe about 50% there. But I will say lock bar tension, not high at all. And that's probably what contributes to this this drop shutty action is the fact that there's not a lot of tension there. Normally on Civivis, I complain about the jimping on the lock bar because it's uncomfortable because the Civivis that I've handled in the past, they seem to have high tension on their lock bars, but they put that jimping on there so it ends up hurting your fingers. This is nothing. This is so, so, so comfortable. 
I, I love everything about this knife, and I'm, I'm trying not to drool too much over this knife, but this review has been a long time coming. This is the Civivi that made me realize that I was going to get another Civivi for sure. One, one minor complaint I will have, the Damascus. So FYI, the Civivi Damascus has been tested. It performs about like 440C, which is pretty good performance, especially, you know, out of a Damascus at this price point. We'll get to the price point in a second. Calm down. But I actually, when I pulled this out of the box, I saw it like this and I was like, oh my gosh, they sent me the wrong knife. They didn't send me the Damascus version. And I'm still, I'm bringing it up. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's not Damascus. What did they do? And I flipped it open. I was like, wait a second. Hmm. It's uh, it's very interesting. It's almost like a cloudy Damascus. The way that they finished it, it, it kind of like comes in and out depending on the light that it's in. So if you're going for like a ridiculously obnoxious Damascus knife, this actually, this might not quench your Damascus thirst if you get the Damascus version because I was actually expecting it to be, uh, hold on. Let me get you another good example real quick. Of course, this is black washed. Here's my Kubi DM902. I was expecting something like this. I was expecting, bam, look at my Damascus. But, you know, this one, I mean, even look at it. Look at it on the table right now. You can barely tell on the blade. And, and this is something, the only reason I'm, I'm a little biffed about this is when you look at these knives in all the photos that Civivi puts out of them, the Damascus looks crazy. The Damascus looks like it's super high contrast and it just looks like super badass Damascus. And then you get it and you're like, hey, where's my Damascus? Not the most egregious thing in the world. Guys, the only other thing, the only other thing I complain about. Okay, well, I'll say two. I'll say two. I, and I really had to nitpick. This cutout here in the middle, it's a little sharp. And again, remember, this is a nitpick. It, it, in my hand, it's not a hot spot. It's not a hot spot to any degree. It doesn't bug me. It doesn't hurt. I'm just telling you, technically, if I wanted to be a real snob, technically these edges are sharp. They probably could have knocked them down a little bit. You could do it with some sandpaper. Big deal. And then the other thing, the Civivi, the titanium pocket clips that they use, they're, they're really stiff. And that lip that they've got going on, it really likes to catch your pants. So I all too often I find myself like really kind of like pulling on this to get it out of my pants because for some reason it really likes to get, you know, stuck on your pants there. Other than that, even down to the pivot, the pivot is D-shaped. So one, it's not free spinning, which is always nice. But two, your Civivi logo, if you're OCD like I am, your Civivi logo will always be straight. So what can I say? The Damascus, a little bit foggy. Uh, this cutout right here on the handle, little sharp. Pocket clip, not my favorite pocket clip. Guys, everything else. What else do you want? We've got contoured edges. We've got chamfered ed edges. We've got chamfered edges on the knife. We've got a beautiful blade. We've got a functional blade. We've got what is arguably a usable finger choil here. The lanyard hole is not obtrusive. Reversible pocket clip. I mean... It's it's skeletonized. They've done everything that you would want them to do on a knife, and the action's amazing. Oh, and by the way, for the for the people I forgot to show, centering, bingo, no problems. And uh, blade play didn't talk about blade play. That's because there's nothing to talk about. There's none, guys. This it's just amazing. This is just it's a great knife. This is one of the ones that I would absolutely. I would actually say you need to go get this knife. I've spoken with people who got the non-Damascus versions and they said that the action was exactly the same as mine, so that's good. Sometimes knives are produced weird and like the different mod the different versions will have different performances. It's it's a little strange. But let's finally look at what we're looking at in terms of price. You can get this on White Mountain Knives, the Damascus version, for $94. You get 10% off, that's basically $10 off, so basically 84 bucks. Do I think that's worth it? Oh yeah, this could be the only knife I own. Honestly, this could be the only knife I own. It, it's fidget friendly, it's EDC friendly, it's not heavy at all. The blade is thick enough to do work, but light enough to actually, you know, cut well. And of course, carbon fiber, brass accents, Damascus, for 84 bucks, you've got a storyteller. You've got a knife that you pull out of your pocket and people go, wow, that's 
that's sexy. Where'd you get that from? What is that? Oh, and by the way, if you want to get the non-Damascus version, they're only $68. Take 10% off that seven bucks. You're looking at 61 bucks. If this, if this was my first knife, if I got this for 61 bucks, I might have never been convinced to buy a knife more expensive than 61 bucks because this is one of those knives where it's like, I don't know what else they could do. I, I really can't think of much else they could do to make this better other than my three extremely minor complaints. So hope you guys found this entertaining. Go pick one up. This one, I, I know I, I have a tendency to say, you know, oh guys, go get the knife. This one, get it. If you've been thinking about it, get it. This one is not going anywhere. I will never loan it out. It will not leave my collection. This is here to stay. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys next time.